<coughs> coughing, wheezing, and a feeling of chest getting tight. <coughs> These are symptoms of asthma. The air tubes in the lungs become narrow, making it hard to breathe. Asthma is a common problem, affecting 1 in 12 children and adults. The symptoms of asthma come and go, and their frequency changes with age, weather, and environment. At times, <laughs> asthma may interfere with daily activities, work, and school. It is important for people who have asthma and for their loved ones to understand how asthma affects breathing, what things can make asthma worse, and how asthma can be treated and controlled. Let's ask Dr. Smart about it. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. R from Smart Clinic. Today, we'll talk about asthma. Dr. R, what is asthma and how does it affect our lungs? To understand asthma, let's first talk about how our lungs work. When we breathe, air enters into our lung through the windpipe. This tube divides in two and connects to each lung and then keeps on dividing like branches of a tree. These small tubes are called bronchioles. Their job is to clean the air by getting rid of dust particles and germs as the air is passing through them. Special safety cells live in the bronchioles. They look out for any troublemakers and stop them from going further. The walls of the tube have tiny muscles. These muscles can squeeze or relax to control how much air goes in and out of the lungs. At the end of these tubes are small air sacs and blood vessels. Millions of air sacs work together to get rid of carbon dioxide from the blood and give it fresh oxygen. This oxygen is now delivered to the rest of the body. This amazing system is working all the time. In asthma, the air tubes become extra sensitive. They have a very strong <laughs> response to small particles and allergens like dust, mold, <laughs> smoke, pollen, and pet dander. In some people, cold air and exercise can also make the air tubes react. These extra sensitive air tubes have a lot more safety cells and they make more mucus. The muscles of the air tubes get thick and react often by squeezing tight. All of these features make the air tubes narrow, which make it harder for air to move in and out of the lungs. You may hear a wheezing sound, breathing getting difficult, and the chest feeling tight. These episodes of reactivity can come and go. In people with severe asthma, these episodes are more frequent and more severe. People with asthma can have normal breathing in between these episodes. Asthma is associated with a number of different things. Often it's related to having allergies, exposure to surrounding environment, genetics, and having family members with asthma. Dr. R, what are the symptoms of asthma and how is it diagnosed? The most common symptoms are wheezing, coughing, difficulty breathing, and chest tightness. Symptoms of asthma come and go. Symptoms can be mild or severe. Often the symptoms are worse at nighttime. Symptoms can vary by seasons or change in weather, like in spring when there is more pollen in the air, or in winter when the air is cold and dry. Similarly, the surrounding environment has an effect. Inside our homes, there is more exposure to dust mites that stick on carpets, curtains, and beddings. There may be mold spores in damp areas of the house. Pet animals shed skin cells and hair that act as allergens for some people. Or there can be cockroach waste or fumes from smoking. On the other hand, in the outdoors, there's exposure to pollen, air pollution, humidity, and cold air. Asthma can also be triggered by respiratory infections, acid reflux, allergies, certain medications, stress, and exercise. The trigger for each person may be different. Asthma usually starts at a younger age, but it can start in adulthood as well. It is diagnosed after listening to a person's story and examining their lungs. Doctors may advise doing one or more breathing tests to confirm the diagnosis of asthma. At times, blood tests, an x-ray, or allergy testing may also be needed. Dr. R, how is asthma treated? When treating asthma, our goal is to reduce the symptoms and episodes of asthma attacks. Treatment includes medicines and avoiding triggers that make asthma worse. The most important medicines are inhalers. There are two types of inhalers, rescue inhalers and controller inhalers. A rescue inhaler is used whenever you feel the symptoms of asthma. The medicine in rescue inhalers works quickly to relax the muscles and open tight air tubes. 
If you have asthma, you should always keep your rescue inhaler with you, as you may need it at any time. Controller inhalers are used every day to help reduce the severity of asthma, even if you don't have active symptoms. The medicine in controller inhaler helps get rid of the swelling and inflammation in the air tubes. It is very important to use the rescue and control inhalers correctly so the medicine can reach deep into the lungs. Using a spacer with your inhaler makes it easy to deliver the medicine inside the lung. With improper use, the medicine may get lost in the air, end up in the back of the throat, or in the stomach. Other medicines may be used to help control allergies, inflammation, and acid reflux. The right combination of medicines depends on how bad your symptoms are and how often you need to use your rescue inhaler. For people with severe asthma that is not well controlled, additional treatment options are also available. The other aspect of treatment is to avoid things and situations that trigger your asthma. Here are some general tips. Keep your home clean and wear a mask when cleaning. If possible, avoid carpets and thick curtains in the home as they hide dust mites, cockroach waste, and allergens that trigger asthma. Use a mask or a cloth to cover your nose and mouth when you are in an environment that triggers your asthma. This can be places with lots of dust, in cold weather, in pollen season, or areas with high air pollution. If you smoke, then quit smoking. It will be very helpful in asthma control. Also avoid being close to others while they're smoking. Other family members in the house should quit smoking or at least avoid smoking inside the house. Use an air conditioner or an air filter to reduce the pollen, dust mites, mold spores, and other allergens in the air. If you are allergic to cat or dog dander, then avoid having them as pets. If you have one, then make sure your pet has regular grooming and cleaning. Depending upon your triggers of asthma, it may be helpful to use hypoallergenic pillows and bedding. Lastly, and importantly, you need to have an action plan in cases of asthma attacks. During an attack, the symptom may be much worse. Your breathing gets difficult with more wheezing, chest tightness, and coughing, and you need to use your rescue inhaler frequently. These attacks can be mild, moderate, or severe. Your asthma action plan will guide you how to monitor your symptoms, what extra medicines to take, like steroid pills or nebulizers, and when to go to the hospital. Remember, with a good understanding of your asthma, you can have better control. Share this information with others as well. Stay healthy and help others stay healthy. Did you know we have so many small air tubes in our lungs? If we put all of our tiny air tubes in one long line, it would be more than 2,000 kilometers. That's the size of the Sahara Desert, the largest desert in the world. How amazing is that? Let's be grateful for our gifted and cool lungs.